tell the truth. Red, huh? Wow, that's so unique. I've always liked the color red. I don't think I've ever filled a quadrant with a red blood before. I mean, uh, I don't think I've ever made friends with a red blood before. You don't know what a quadrant is, or what it means to fill one. Given your experience on this planet so far, you're nervous that it can mean something violent. But you don't want to further expose your ignorance, so you just say that you're as excited for this friendship as he is. You come on strong. Nice. You need a place to stay for the day, right? I could help you out with that. I've got plenty of spare rooms for guests in my hive. You know, because I believe it's important to help out the undeserved members of the community when you can. My hive is this way, shall we? You follow him down the street. You guess it must qualify as a nice night because you see lots of other trolls walking around here too. Most of them are dressed as nice as Zebra and you see a few shabbier looking trolls that must be low bloods walking with high bloods. Today is actually flushed affirmation day, so you'll see a lot of trolls taking their mate spritz out to celebrate. Lucky for you, my flush quadrant is currently empty, so I'm all yours tonight. That sounds a little weird. He doesn't need to be all yours, you assure him. You're an easygoing individual who's happy to share their friends with plenty of other friends. Sure, sure. Sharing can be a good time if you're into that. I could be, speaking personally, like maybe with two low bloods, but not in an objectifying way. Everyone involved has got to respect each other, you know. Wow, what? You have no idea how your innocent comment about friendship got taken to this particular place. You decide that maybe the best thing to say here is nothing, because who knows how he might misinterpret you next. Huh. Looks like there are a lot of high blood, low blood couples out tonight for the holiday. Pretty unusual to see in this neighborhood, to be honest. It's sad, but most of these low bloods are probably with their mate spritz because it's socially advantageous. Pretty shitty of the high bloods to take advantage of that, but not everyone is socially conscious as I am. I think it's super terrible when high bloods don't treat their low blood mate spritz like the queens that they are. You look around at all the other couples. The class divide is pretty noticeable, and some of the high blood trolls have scornful looks on their faces when talking to their low blood dates. One troll dressed in cerulean is making her shabbily dressed mate spurt kneel down so he can give her a ride on his shoulders. It could be maybe a cute couple-y thing, you guess, except she's sure laughing a lot and has the heel of her boot pressing into the back of his neck. You don't want to speculate about what people might be into, but it does seem kind of humiliating. Zebra sees where you're looking and shudders theatrically. In the process of waving his arms around in disgust, he slips an arm over your shoulders. I'm so sorry, you shouldn't have to see something like that. You're trying to think of a tactful and friendly way to move away from his arm around your shoulders when you arrive at what must be his hive. It's the biggest and most McMansion-y hive on the block, and when he stops in front of it, he lets go of you to gesture proudly at his sprawling home. Welcome to my <laughs> humble abode. I just feel grateful, you know, to be able to share my wealth with those less fortunate. When you walk inside the front door, you're greeted by a very distinguished-looking white zebra. It has normal zebra markings all over its body, except for around its neck, where the dark gray zags have formed a shape that looks like a bow tie, almost like it's wearing a suit. You don't know how its zebra face is managing to radiate pure disdain when it looks at you, but that is unquestionably the energy you're getting. Oh, don't mind my Lucis, he's kind of socially old-fashioned. But he lets me keep low bloods around the hive to help out and stuff, so he's not all bad. Let me give you the grand tour. As Zebra takes you through the spacious hive, you can see some other trolls in several of the rooms. Most of them aren't wearing clothes as nice as Zebra's. You're guessing these are the low bloods he just mentioned? They seem to be all doing chores, sweeping, cooking, exchanging green slime and troll-sized bathtubs for other, possibly fresher, green slime. Each of them glances up at you and Zebra when you pass by, then looks differentially away. The Zebra Lessus is following you, and every time you exit a room it pauses in the doorway to whinny out what could be orders, or possibly he's just berating them. You arrive at an empty ballroom looking space upstairs, where several low blood trolls are hard at work cleaning up the remains of what must have been quite a party. Zebra seems to notice you noticing how all the trolls in here are scrubbing the floor and how they are all avoiding your eyes. 
See, I told you I take in plenty of guests. I believe it's important to promote diversity, you know. So that's why you don't see other indigo bloods here. Looks like all the guests are busy today. Well, an important part of communal living involves contributing your labor when it's necessary, right guys? A few lowbloods mutter an affirmation, while others just put their sponges and mops down to prostrate their whole bodies on the floor. Zebra looks a little uncomfortable with the bowing, but not that uncomfortable. He doesn't introduce you to any of them. Ah, oh, they don't all realize yet that my hive is a sanctuary from the harsh injustices of the outside world. Anyway, enough about my lowblood guests, let's take care of you, shall we? Perhaps his Lessus has had enough of tolerating your presence because it takes the opportunity to stop following you and go huff at more of Zebra's guests. Now, for better or worse, you are alone and Zebra has turned all of his attention on you. His smile seems very... friendly. You want to see it as friendly. The night is still young. I'm happy to do whatever you want to do. If you feel like going out in the town to celebrate Flushed Affirmation Day, I have lots of other friends I could introduce you to, help you meet the right kind of culture, you know. Or if you're tired, I can show you to your guest room now and we could have a nice night in. Hmm, go out or stay in? Let's go out! You're not crazy about the idea of being alone with this guy for the rest of the night. Plus, if he's as popular as he says he is, that means more potential friends for you to meet! You tell him that you're interested in going out. Cool, cool. That sounds like a great time. I'll just go get ready. Actually, I think I'm more in the mood for a nice quiet night in. Maybe television streaming service and lower the temperature if that's cool with you. Uh, boy. If that does have the same connotations as it does on Earth, it's not cool with you. You stumble through expressing some misgivings, but he talks over you. Great. Sounds like we both feel like staying in tonight. I'm not gonna lie, I'm psyched to stay in and have you all to myself. I just want you to feel comfortable whenever we choose to do. You're not sure why he asked what you wanted to do since your preferences don't seem to matter much. My Lucis and my guests have probably prepared a delicious meal for you by now, but let's finish the tour first. I assume you want to see my room. You tell him, sure! Bedrooms are a great way for people to express their personalities, and as his friend, you're interested in getting to know him better! He doesn't seem to have heard part of that sentence, but it's okay. Hopefully he got the gist. When you go to his enormous room, it's decorated with posters of musicians on the wall and what seem to be social justice slogans. One poster has a symbol with clawed hands and several different colors coming together to hold a trident with the word unity underneath it. Another poster features a rainbow of colors ranging from rust to olive green that proclaims him to be a low blood ally. Two other low blood servants are in here, one of them standing on a stepladder to dust some high shelves, while the other crawls around on the floor, scrubbing and picking up wrappers that Zebra seems to have just littered there. Pretty sweet place, right? You look confused by the posters. Your music taste probably isn't refined enough to have heard of my favorite bands. I only listen to subversive musicians that speak truth to power. Luckily, you have me to teach you how to confront your privilege and support marginalized artists. Also, did you notice my rad pile? It's a perfect setup for feeling jams with your moirail. He winks at you. You don't know what a moirail is or what he means by feelings jam, which sounds like in theory it could be a nice thing, but maybe not given the sleazy way he says it. You tell him that it looks like a very nice pile of... Things. You spot a couple pillows, what looks like a puppet with a disturbingly long nose, some random bow ties, a few horseshoes. You look intrigued. Want to lie down in it for a second? We don't have to do anything, but sometimes it can be nice to just, you know, pacify each other for a little bit. He sprawls on the pile in what he probably thinks is an enticing way, like he wants you to draw him like one of your French girls. You turn away to try and hide the disturbed expression on your face, because turning down his advances probably isn't the best way to secure his friendship. As your eyes cast about the rest of the room, you notice the low blood servant scrubbing the floor is having a coughing fit. You can tell that she's trying to cough unobtrusively, but it seems like she's hacking her lungs up, with each big cough racking her whole body and making her shoulders shake. Concerned, you crouch down by her side. She jumps when she notices your concern, and mumbles that she's fine and that you don't need to worry. But she doesn't look fine. Now that you're getting a closer look, you can tell that she seems to be underfed and exhausted, with sickly shadows on her face and scraped up knees and elbows. 
She looks bad, and you know bad, considering how much of your time you've spent recently stumbling around with various excruciating injuries. You mentioned to Zebra that his guest is not looking so good. He frowns, getting up from his pile of stuff to come investigate, blinking down at you in confusion and not sparing a glance for the low blood. What? What are you even talking about? The servant tries to go back to her scrubbing, but she struggles with coughing and scrubbing simultaneously. It's hard for you to watch. Surely she would feel better if she took a break and ate or drank something? You asked Zebra about that hot meal he said was being cooked for you. Maybe you could give some of it to this poor sick troll. Uh... Jeez, you're making me look bad. <laughs> There's no way a guest in my house could be going hungry. I respect lowbloods and do everything in my power to take care of them. What, you think you're a better ally than I am? Considering your status, or lack thereof, on this planet, you're not sure you count as an ally so much as a member of the oppressed underclass, but you let that slide. You hasten to explain that you didn't mean to criticize him, and you're sure he's doing a fine job of being an ally to lowbloods. Yeah, well, it's not easy. Whatever. Maybe we should go eat now. I don't feel like having a feelings jam anymore. He turns and leaves the room without showing any sign that he'll do something for the sick lowblood. You mouth an apology to her behind his back, and she just gives you a tired wave and goes back to scrubbing. Zebra leads you downstairs to the dining room, where Lessis is supervising a team of lowbloods setting the table with what looks like a four-course meal. The look on the Lessis zebra's face is now even more disdainful than before, and its bow tie seems angrier. Looks like dinner is almost ready. Cool, cool. Of course, you're probably not going to offer to pay for any of it, are you? Figures. Lowbloods. I mean, trolls in general are always expecting me to provide for them without ever offering any concupiscence in return. For once, you're kind of glad that you're unfamiliar with this alien vocabulary and innuendo. You have absolutely no money, which he definitely knows. You can pay him back for the dinner in... friendship? Yeah, well, I'm not sure if I want to be friends with someone who has a problem with the way I do activism. I have an under good authority from every other high blood I know that my intersectional praxis is valid. You stumble over your words in your haste to assure him that you in no way meant to say he's not valid. You've never met a troll so valid. No one believes his validity more than you do. Whatever, let's just eat. You both sit down at the table while the low blood set the table, light the candles, and serve the appetizer course. You can't help but notice that most of them look just as malnourished and sickly as the troll upstairs, but it might be best not to bring that up again. You eat in silence for a while, and Zebra looks like he's stewing over something, then he sets his fork down and looks over the table at you with a frown. You know what? Well, I just realized. You totally denied my low blood her own agency when you questioned me about not feeding her. Yeah, what you said was totally problematic. You don't respect low bloods at all, do you? Not like I do. You try to apologize, saying that it was not your intention to disrespect anyone, but that you're sorry you apparently did. He doesn't let you get the words out. People who don't realize how tough it is to be a high-blood troll who believes in social justice. Seriously, I face my own kind of oppression for speaking out and being an activist for low-blood rights. For one thing, I never get the conciliation or concupiscence I deserve. My quadrants are always going unfulfilled because no one else agrees with my radical views. I thought you'd be different, but you don't get it either. You try to tell him that he's got you all wrong. You agree with his radical views and believe in low blood rights, which is why you were concerned for his guests in the first place. But he acts like you didn't say any of what you just said. You're just another one of the oppressors, complicit in the unequal power structures of our fucked up society. Your lack of awareness of your own privilege really makes me sick. You must think you're so oppressed with your red blood and multiple injuries. But what you're doing now, rejecting me and criticizing me, it's really exactly the same as what some jugulators do to the low bloods they call. You probably deserve whatever shitty position you have in society. Unlike me, I deserve to have this nice house and low blood servants in a full quadrants for being such a good activist, okay? He's standing up by now, advancing on you with a zebra stamping its hooves threateningly at his side. You scramble back, trying to make your way to the front door. It's tricky because you have to step around all the low bloods who seem to feel strongly that they should get away from Zebra when he's angry. You don't make it to the front door fast enough on your own. With a terrifying equine scream, Zebra's Lustus rears up on its hind legs and strikes you with its hooves, battering you through the front door and breaking some of your recently healed ribs again. Take your privilege and defensive views and get out. Anyone who doesn't respect low bloods is not welcome as a guest in my hive.